All right, guys, we should be on in a second. Okay, Snowy, Alphonse, who is going first? Are you guys okay? I don't know. It's okay. Rocky, be Tomar Jochi. Or I go. I think uh, Snowy Daru give Pella Karusha, man. I think because you sent it, I have it on the top. Let okay. me just get it first mm -hmm. one second. Let me share the screen and then we will. Um, Let's actually pray, and then I will uh, will go in the worship. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you again for bringing us together uh, this evening. I just want to uh, lift this time uh, with uh, our fellow brothers and sisters, with my MGM family, with those who watch and uh, pray and are connected with us right now, Lord. I want to bring them into your presence. Uh, this entire hour that we have, uh, Lord, we lift that up into your presence. Uh, may the words of our mouths, the, the songs we sing, the, uh, the instruments we play, uh, our heart attitude completely, uh, may that be uh, acceptable unto you, Lord. And I just want to thank you again for all that you uh, enable us, all that you allow us to do, Lord, uh, because we are weak and uh, we are broken, uh, but Lord, uh, you make us complete. So here we are again at your feet, uh, and in the, especially in the times uh, of uh, Christmas, where we are going to celebrate Christ's birth. Uh, at the same time, Lord, there are other things going on in the world. We also want to uh, be mindful of that. Uh, but uh, this mixed feeling, uh, with that mixed feelings, Lord, we, we come at your feet. Uh, just uh, bless us, uh, help us to feel your presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, so let me put that in the, present that one second. Okay, so this is light of the world. Go ahead, sorry. Okay, let's start the worship and we worship the light of the world who came down for us and save us from the scene. So let's just worship uh, the light of the world in this Christmas season. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart a joy. Move up a lifespan with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for the sake we came to. So here I am to mercy, here I am to bow down, here I am to save you're my God. You're all 
together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. So here I am to mercy, here I am to go down, here I am to see them, you're my God, you're all together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say them, you're my God, you're all together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, appreciate that. A beautiful reminder of how beautiful our God is. He's worthy, he's lovely. All right, so uh, Rocky, Celeste, and uh, Jairus, we're going to hear Ad Avi Anandi Natal. Hello everyone, uh, we're going to sing this song called uh, Avi Anandi Natal. Uh, it, it is like a, a different uh, tune, so try to learn with this. Um, so I was talking to one person this week, uh, last week, and we had a conversation. Um, and the person asked, should we celebrate this Christmas? Because there are so many uh people has lost their loved ones and all chaos so many people have lost uh, their jobs and people have the people are in pain so i mean in that uh in that pain should we celebrate this christmas and uh my pastor answered definitely yes because this year we need to celebrate this christmas more joyfully because so many people have lo uh, lost their loved ones, but know that they are free from this pain and they are with the Lord in heaven rejoicing. So we need to celebrate because they are free from this, uh, all the burdens and chaos from the world and they are with the Lord enjoying over there. So we definitely need to celebrate this Christmas more joyfully because Jesus our loved ones are with him with without pain enjoying in heaven so let's sing this song called uh avi anandi natal and let's just fresh refresh our minds hearts because because jesus we have hope and our loved ones are with him they are not in pain anymore so let's sing this song called avi anandi natal
That's right, Avi Anandi Natal, and I echo what uh, Rocky said about his pastor. Yes, uh, you know, God is an unchanging God yesterday, today, forever, uh, and his plans will never change. Uh, so I know the worldly situation, circumstances around us change, but uh, our God is a constant God. He's, um, he's got a specific plan laid out and uh, he moves forward. Uh, and I think uh, nothing uh, wears him from his plan and we need to move along with him. And this is all the more uh, time, uh, more important this time than ever that we need to bring God in our lives more. So yes, uh, we will celebrate this morning uh, in the um, Sunday school. I had, our, uh, I had the entire Bible story told to the children and it was really a kind of sort of surprising new thing for them. They never heard that story that way because they hear different stories about Jesus' birth, about the Magi, about, uh, you know, the, the angels and also, all the, you know, the relation from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So in brief, I had shared with them. Uh, and yes, there is a reason why Christ came and he became a, uh, you know, a man like us letting go his kingship and, you know, his Godhead, you know, uh, nature, divine nature. He uh, came here to become a holy man uh, for a reason. And I, I shared that with them. Uh, and all the more reason we would not forget why Christ, uh, you know, uh, took birth, you know, in this uh, lowly manger in Bethlehem, right? 
So let's sing this song. The next one I'm going to sing, and I'm going to sing some English hymns. Uh, and uh, the, for your benefit, I have left the words up there. Away in a manger uh, is the first one. And uh, just, uh, I'm sure you know it. And I always tell people that even if you are muted, uh, you just sing uh, along wherever you are and enjoy. We got to have that spirit of joy. Uh, last night, we had so much joy when we sang together. Yes, this morning, we had a lot of joy uh, when we sang for each other, wished Merry Christmas to everyone. And uh, so that joy has to be there, right? Uh, so sing where you are. Um, at, but I'm sure some of you, or maybe most of you know this song. It's a popular hymn. Okay. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my side till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever, and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and take us to heaven to live with thee there. Okay. On the same note, we're going to have a lot of Christmas carols. And I think at the end, we are going to wish everybody who is connected with us and our family members, we're going to wish them that Merry Christmas and uh, Salam Natalni. Uh, and also we're going to pray uh, for each one of us, for each other, the prayers that are needed. So allow me to uh, sing a couple of other Christmas carols. Uh, and if our team has another song or something, keep it ready. Let me know in the chat or however but uh, I, I have a couple of these hymns that are traditionally sung here. And especially we, when we worship in English in MGM, I wanted to uh, add those in, uh, in our worship today. Okay, so this one here is Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excels is there. Gloria. In excels is there. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be, which inspire heavenly song? Glory. In excels is there, Gloria. In excels is there. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, cries the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excels is there. Gloria. 
excels is Okay, before we sing the next one, which all of you know, O Come All Ye Faithful, I want to just share with you some uh, uh, words uh, uh, that we learned already today. And um, also today, in the, I just won't have a big sermon, but just turning our focus to the Lord is the idea as we prepare for uh, you know, his birth. But remember that uh, the first coming has already happened. Uh, we are now awaiting the second coming, and it's not going to be as a child. All right, we know that. But... Uh, in, in the plan of God, what has transpired, what has already happened, we are celebrating that today. So like that, I wish I can tell you that whole story I told the uh, children today, this today in the Sunday school, but, uh, you know, most of you know, but just in a concise, uh, precise way, uh, you know, how God's plan worked from the day, I know he created the earth uh, all the way to when Christ was born and even today. Uh, one of the important things I told the children that the Bible is not being written today. I think we know that the Bible is complete, right? But uh, the book of life is open and our story is written there. Uh, every day when we deal with people, when we talk to people, when we uh, have our actions and our thoughts, all of them are recorded in that book. So our story is written and when we share somebody uh, when we share Christ with somebody, when we evangelize, when we tell people about this good news gospel, uh, when we lead or you know point others to Christ, uh, all of those things are written, right? So our story is continuing right now up in heaven until the day, uh, you know, it's not finished yet, right? But the, when it comes to finish, we'll we'll see it all, we'll hear it all, right? So let's stay uh, active in there. Uh, but when we do. Um, one of the stories we shared this morning was about the Magi's and what we learned from the story of the Magi's or some people say the three kings, right? We learned from them uh, how they come to worship the God. I'll tell you a few points about that, but let's uh, sing this song, which everybody knows. All right. Oh, come holy faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. God of God, light of light, lo, he abhors not the virgin womb. Very God, begotten, not created. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels. Sing in exultation, sing all the citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning. Jesus, to thee be glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. OK. 
Okay. So uh, amazing uh, verses, amazing hymns, traditional carols. Uh, thank God for those we are always enjoying every year. Uh, year after year, we sing all of these and uh, uh, so much uh, meaning in there, right? Um, so, okay, uh, let's make a few announcements and then we can pray. Uh, and then we can look at God's word briefly. Like I said, I know, um, you know, uh, we've had long days and we've had enough, a lot of sharing and but I don't want to go without, uh, you know, uh, God's word. But let's let's first remember our loved ones and share our prayer requests. So if you have any, uh, either you can put it in the chat or you can uh, put it on the Facebook. I, if I can catch it, I will try to catch it there. Um, but um, definitely we can pray for each other right now. Okay, so uh, the first announcement that I want to make is the 25th, this Friday, coming Friday, uh, is our big Christmas day. Uh, on that day, I can tell you I, that first thing is we will not have this evening service, but we will be combining this service uh, in the morning with the Church of India service, uh, which we are going to have at 12 o'clock. And we will send you all the information, the news, uh, the links, all of that. Uh, but it's at 12 o'clock. Instead of 10, it's going to be at 12 uh, sun, uh, on Friday afternoon. What I have suggested and requested everyone that when you join, uh, please uh, be dressed as if you are ready, uh, you know, or going to church or you are in church uh, in the presence of God. So we can take some good screenshots and pictures and remember each other in a uh, Christmassy mood, Christmas uh, clothing, but we'll, we'll definitely, uh, you know, appreciate that. If you can kind of be ready, be dressed and, you know, uh, be uh, be present on online here, right? So we're not meeting in person, uh, but we will definitely be on the you know, online at 12 o'clock uh, and we will do the traditional Christmas. It's going to be a different kind of a service where I figured like we, we planned where different people will have different parts to play, different kinds of reading uh, and uh, songs in between and it will be an interactive service. So please join us next Friday or this coming Friday, I should say, at 12 o'clock, right? Um, other than that, I do want to request a special prayers uh, for the Vasaiwala family, which has been the latest, uh, you know, news amongst, uh, you know, our families here. Um, and you know, uh, Jonathan Uncle, many of you might know, you know, he passed away a few days ago, and there are some, some things that need to be taken care of, uh, you know, um, his uh, funeral service related. So, all those arrangements need to be lifted up in the prayer. Uh, Pushpanti and Robin, uh, the daughter of Uncle uh, Rupa Ben, and her daughter is here. There's uh, other family members in New York, two sons and their families, Reverend Rasin Vasaiwala and Rajubai. Uh, along with that, we have Vijay Vasaiwala, who lives very close to us. Uh, we have Ketan Bai and Sheetal Ben, who always join us, and our MGM daughter, Stuti and Ashish. Uh, their relative, you know, Shobha Ben Frank uh, and Robin by their family. So all uh, all in relation uh, to Vasaiwala Uncle, we will lift them up in prayer. Uh, plus there are some news from uh, uh, around the you know, places, uh, especially our local one is um, Sushila Auntie, uh, you many of you know, and that is Snowy's uh, Masi, Snowy, Steffi and Steve, who are always, uh, you see them on our screen. Um, their Masi, meaning Guni auntie's sister, Sushila Masi, uh, was contacted and uh, attested positive. Uh, and we need to pray for her healing and also protection over Miti Dadi, Guni auntie, all three kids here uh, with uh, Cheryl and Anya and their her brother and their um, kid, Dr. Krunal. Uh, and also pray for other family members, Johnny and them, whoever has come in contact with them. So this is a critical time to mm -hmm. pray for them. Uh, we need to also pray for uh, people in India. Uh, we had a, uh, Mr. Rathod that we got prayer requests for who had a brain hemorrhage and uh, left part of his body not working. And uh, we need prayer for that. We need to pray for Dan Paul that passed away. He's not for him. He's no more with us, but for the Paul family. Um, so they will, uh, we will definitely uh, pray for them. Um, also, Let's see, any other requests that, I don't know if you guys have any that you wanna uh, share for prayer, uh, but I definitely have this 
uh, many. And we'll pray for our church services, online services. Uh, we'll continue to pray for that. Uh, I want to pray especially for MGM uh, worship team. Uh, I know they are always willing to serve. They're always willing to gather uh, for the Lord's glory. So I want to pray that they're also kept safe. Uh, and the children like Jairus and, uh, uh, you know, Ethan and Aiden and uh, uh, Zamira, you know, and Sheldon and all of them, we pray for them and their parents that they would also be kept uh, safe during these times. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, I think there were many other birthdays, and I'm not going to go through that list right now. We had, you can always watch the morning service, which has all the details, and I don't want to repeat all the details here, but uh, so we will definitely pray for the birthdays and anniversaries coming up, the, you know, this month, uh, along with our Lord Jesus Christ's birthday, right? I mean, we, we say, call it his birthday, uh, so we'll pray for that. Uh, and Ketan, by, uh, welcome. I think we just joined, but we just um, uh, requested a prayer here right now for all your family, uh, especially Jonathan Uncle and, uh, you know, Pushpa auntie and Robin Emna Kas, um, and their daughter, uh, Rupa Ben, you guys and Shobha Ben, everybody we prayed. We put in a request, but we're going to pray for it right now. Pray for everyone right now. Okay. So I believe if there is no other requests, I don't see any on the Facebook. So uh, let us pray and then we can turn to, uh, well, we'll sing one more song and maybe then we can go to the Lord's word. Okay. So Heavenly Father, thank you again for uh, your goodness, grace, mercies, your love, your uh, generosity, your provisions, your forgiveness, all those blessings that you grant us. And Lord, we thank you that uh, uh, you enable us uh, to even uh, get together online. Uh, you give us a chance and opportunity to worship you. And our joy, the true joy of a Christian life, the true joy of Christmas right now is in worshiping you. Uh, Lord, this morning we, we, we learned that um, the real joy is in uh, seeking in the, the right thing, like looking for the right thing, looking for the joy in the right things, uh, and also looking, looking for the joy in the right places. And then we also learned that the, the real joy is in giving uh, more than receiving. My Sunday school children, one of the daughters, uh, Janice, she spoke that uh, truth. Uh, I never even shared that with her, but I was asking, what is Christmas to them? And this little girl, Lord, uh, eight years old, I believe, eight or nine years, I think she's no more older than that. And she says, oh, Christmas is about giving and not receiving. My goodness, how true is that, Lord? So help us to help us to learn this truth as we share uh, the love, the generosity, the kindness you show to us, uh, and very importantly, the forgiveness that you uh, show to us. Help us to pass on that forgiveness to others, Lord. Also help us to tell others about the story of uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, Lord. Uh, that others who may not know, let them hear uh, through our mouths uh, the story of uh, Jesus Christ's birth, what the meaning of it is, why Christ came on the earth, the whole uh, plan of God, the salvation plan. Uh, Lord, help us to tell others so that we would want everybody uh, that we know uh, to know about Jesus Christ and that they would receive the gift of eternal life. So we pray that for everybody. Lord, I do want to lift up right now uh, the Vasaiwala family again as we counted all the names, uh, and I pray for Pushpanti and Robin and Rupa Ben and her daughters and Ketan Bai, Sheetal Ben and Suthi and Ashish and Robin Frank, Shobha Frank and uh, Rachel and Sam and uh, Rasin Bai and Raju Bai and their families and others who are connected with uncle and even our church families, our community members who were connected to uncle so uh, well. I pray for every one of them, Lord, because this is a big loss uh, for not just the family, but even for the community. As we know how good uncle was to take care of other people. He was the one taking care of so many elders in the family uh, or in the community. And that service is going to be missed by these elders and uh, in our community. So Lord, we pray for everyone that you give them comfort. You console them. Uh, Lord, you give us the uh, the, the confirm, confirm this faith, your promise uh, that Jonathan Uncle is in a better place with you right now and that we also will be seeing him soon, uh, Lord, when you come again or if we come to you uh, before that. But the important thing, Lord, we pray that uh, we would have our lives in order 
so that uh, we would be uh, uh, worthy and that you would choose us to enter the you know, kingdom of heaven, Lord. So help us to live accordingly after uh, making Jesus Christ our own savior, our personal savior, Lord, and receiving forgiveness from him. I do want to pray for uh, uh, Sushi Masi, uh, and Anupambai and everybody there, Lord, uh, that names we counted, uh, grant healing to Sushila Masi and uh, get her well, Lord. I pray that as we have seen in many cases uh, that you would also work in her life and get her uh, to be healthy again, Lord. Uh, I pray for others who are looking for healing. Uh, I want to pray for Mr. Rathod in India that uh, has a brain hemorrhage uh, and I pray that uh, you, you would heal him as well. Uh, and there are many others, Lord, in India, uh, in Maninagar area, especially all over the world and even closer to home here uh, in America, Lord. I put all of them in your hands and in your care. I also want to put our um, elders who stay home uh, and, uh, you know, even there is a fear for them to get any kind of sickness, which is a dangerous thing right now. So I pray that you would also grant protection to them for the little children. Uh, for those of us who do go out and, you know, in a way to serve you uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, we do go out and uh, meet in person and uh, sometimes we take those uh, chances, but Lord, we ask for your protection over each one of us as well. We want to thank you for those of us who have continued to have jobs uh, and we have been able to work from home or even the ones uh, who have to go to work. Uh, you know, in the, the medical field, those are pharmacists and nurses and doctors uh, and other frontline workers uh, that are essential workers, those who go to work, uh, Lord. Um, we pray for a protection over them as well, Lord. For those who have lost their jobs and lost their source of income, I pray, Lord, that you would provide for them somehow <clears throat> and you would take care of all their needs at this time, Lord. I just want to pray for the children, and I want to pray for all your servants, the pastors, the churches that meet, uh, you know, and they, uh, the pastors who serve you, uh, who spread your, your good news, the good word. I pray for their Christmas services and their Christmas plans. I pray that you would uh, grant your blessings to each one of them as well. So thank you again. Uh, put the rest of this time in your hands and uh, even our future plans, uh, the Christmas service and the New Year service after that. Uh, all of those things that we will plan, uh, Lord, I pray that uh, you would be with us and you would um, just be uh, gracious enough to help us, uh, to have us feel your presence. Lord, we're going to talk about your presence in a little bit. And uh, Lord, I pray that uh, uh, we would really truly feel that even on Zoom uh, in an impersonal way. So again, thank you very much for everything, Lord. We ask these things in the name of Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, let me see, I may have one song before we go to God's word. Let's see. Let me pick one. I think we have a lot of, okay, we'll sing this one. Um, we three kings of Orient are, which in Gujarati we sing as Purvana Amrajan Tran, right? So we three kings of Orient are, we'll sing that in English. Um, and uh, just follow along as it is. We cannot sing together. Uh, if you have the verse, you can pull up or um, you can. Or actually, you know what? Let me just share again. I think I'll just share it briefly again. Hang on a minute. This way you can actually at least sing where you are. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts, we traverse afar. Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. O oh, star of wonder, star of might, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a babe on Bethlehem's plain, gold we bring to crown him again. King forever, seizing never, over us all 
to reign. O star of wonder, star of mine, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us through the perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, prayer and praising, all men raising, worshiping God on high. Oh, star of wonder, star of mine. Star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Okay, so welcome again, everybody. And just briefly, I want to talk about God's presence and the key verses there. I want to share with you is from Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10. Psalm 139 and verses 7 through 10, I'm going to read them for you. And it says, Psalm 139, verse 7 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Right? So, I mean, you know, this is a very familiar verse that Lord's presence is everywhere. That's one thing we need to know. God's presence is everywhere. So even in the midst of this coronavirus, even in the midst of these times where we are all locked in, uh, we can't go to certain places, people can't meet, you know, uh, God is present everywhere. The, the attribute for God, the, uh, God's character says omnipresent, meaning he is present everywhere. Uh, we cannot go anywhere and hide from God. Uh, we cannot go any place where God is not present. And the reason why it is important for us to know this and especially for the young people to know that, that you just, you know, sometimes people try to say, hey, I'll do it in a dark room. I'll do something where nobody can see. And that is why a lot of crimes happen at night. People think that in the darkness of night, it's not visible, but the Lord sees it all. All our sins, all our actions are, are seen, are visible to God like plain daylight. God is light. He sees it all in light. And we have to be very careful. And I just want to add one more thing here that, there are people who refuse to believe that there is God. But just by their denying that there is God, they cannot escape God's judgment. That is bound to come. That is bound to happen. And this excuse that if they come up with on that day that I'm sorry, I did not know, or nobody told me, or, you know, I heard it, but it didn't make sense. And I didn't, that's why I didn't believe, or, oh, I, oh, I know God, you are a forgiving God. And all of these things, what we have to remember that God is also a just God, just meaning he does, you know, perfectly. He, his justice is perfect. He's a righteous God. He cannot tolerate sin. So, you know, uh, when there is sin, he has to deal with it, right? And one way he dealt with it was sending his son, Jesus Christ, right? That is his way of dealing with sin and sacrificing his one and only, the begotten son. So whosoever may believe it would have eternal life, would not perish. So God has already given us an opening. But if we choose not to, if we choose not to come in God's presence, or if we choose not to surrender our lives to God, um, then it is up to us. God has given us a free will. Just know that God's presence is everywhere. Now, here's another thing about God's presence. If you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, uh, let me just open that and I will read it for you. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, it talks about God's presence. And the thing that we know about God's presence there is that God's presence is personal. The first one is God's presence is everywhere. This one here says God's presence is 
personal. And Genesis 3, uh, verse 8 says, let's see here. Genesis 3, verse 8 says, God appeared as before in tones of goodness and kindness, walking in some visible form uh, here. And uh, then the, the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. Right? Now, God's presence is personal. He's going to call us with our names. He knows our names, right? Uh, from the beginning, God had time for a personal relationship with man. Uh, you know, God may have many things. You may think that there is a whole universe to take care of God. The planets and the universe and the black holes and the stars and uh, galaxies and Milky Ways and so many things and the earth rotating on the axis around the sun and all the solar systems. God has plenty of things to take care of, but he's already put it in place. He's already designed it. But God is interested and God has that time for a personal relationship with us, with you and I. If you go to the Lord, if you get on your knees and call upon the name of the Lord, he will come and meet you wherever you are, however you are. God doesn't wait till you dress up. God doesn't wait till you get up. God doesn't wait till you are able. God doesn't wait till you go out and fix yourself in some way, but God meets you right now. Right, Just like we see in Genesis 3, 8, that God is walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And although in that particular day, uh, Adam and Eve sinned, as we read, but uh, they would have spent time you know, daily before that. But if they, you know, here's the thing, what is happening there is God is giving them a chance to confess. So even us, if we have sin in our life that keeping us away from God, sometimes it's our own, we call it conscience, but it is the Holy Spirit nagging and telling us that we did something wrong. If you feel like you need to hide from God, don't do that. God actually wants you to turn around, acknowledge who God is when he comes to you. And when, uh, when you know, when, when the Holy Spirit's telling you, confess well, you know, and every day we need to confess, we need to repent, and we need to do that 180 degree turn around. If you're going one direction, turn around and come back, walk towards God, uh, because God wants to have a personal relation with you and I. So after their sin, what happened with Adam and Eve, we know that, um, you know, um, their fellowship with God was broken. Sin broke off the personal presence of God, right? Until then, God was personal, present right in front of them, walking with them. So that relationship with, was, you know, maybe broken. But in spirit, uh, and even in person, God, we can't see him, but he's present. So he has offered, her, offered us his presence. It is a personal presence. And he's when I say personal, it is for each one of us. It's not that he's in his church waiting for his people to come. He's in your homes. He's in your living room. He's in your bedroom, dining room, wherever you're sitting right now. Wherever you, if you're driving and listening to this, God is in the car with you. His presence is personal, right? Uh, and, and it does the same thing today. Uh, Psalm 66, 18. I'm going to read that for you. Uh, Psalm uh, chapter 66, verse 18. Sorry, no, this is, like I said, this is not a sermon that I'm doing today. All right, so we are going to just read uh, some verses and learn about God's presence out of some of these things. So Psalm 66 and verse 18. Okay. It says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. It's the same thing, basically what we do. How can we have a personal relationship with the, with the presence of God when we have sinned against this holy God? So remember that, you know, and it's not, here's the thing, nobody is perfect. Uh, I, just because I'm telling you something or just because some big bishop or a high priest or somebody may be telling you something, they are not, uh, you know, free of sin either. All of us are sinners and all of us are in need of a savior. And that is why Jesus Christ came upon this earth so that we may go to him, receive him, accept him as our savior, right? So, but remember that, you know, God is not going to let us stand in his presence with any kind of sin. Uh, and unless that sin is forgiven, uh, you know, in the in our righteousness, in the holiness, uh, in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we cannot, uh, you know, go to God. The third thing that I want to tell you about God's presence is that God's presence is practical. 
God's presence, when I say practical, it means it's something that is practiced in our lives. Okay. Uh, just because God is present and we're like, oh, la, la, la. No, you know, that's not what it is. It has to be practiced in our lives, knowing that God is present with us, around us, in us, coming through us, right? God's presence is beneficial to us. God's presence is useful to us. God's presence is something to be enjoyed. I mean, how many of us actually enjoy God's presence? Who, uh, you know, who in their uh, worship of God is enjoying that? Who, or are we just doing that as a duty? Are we just doing that as a ritual? But I think the, the idea is that we uh, are, we should rejoice when we come in God's presence. We should be joyful, uh, even though if it is a morning service, even though if it is a late night service, even though the service goes on a little longer, if the worship goes on, uh, you know, for a little while, we need to uh, just think, have that presence of God in mind, and that's what we should be. We should be joyful. And I, I want to read one other verse about this joyful worship. Okay, and it it talks about this Psalm chapter one, verse two. Uh, you know, uh, remember what it? Uh, you know, the one who sits with the sinners and all that. But the verse two talks about, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruits in season. So the idea is that one who delights. Can you imagine with a sad face, you talk about joy? No. Can you imagine if you are like fearful when you hear about the commandments or, you know, uh, you know, the judgment kind of something like that. Uh, but the idea is that we have to delight in the laws of the Lord because we know God means well for us. He wants us to be reconnected, uh, uh, re-entering into his presence. And that's his plan. So the person who meditates on God's, God's word day and night, he is like a, a tree planted uh, near streams of water. And what does that mean? A tree planted near streams of water would have a fruits, right? He, it would be fertile. It would be fruitful. And does question to us is, is our life fruitful? The practical part of it is, uh, are we leading our families in a fruitful way? Are we leading people that God bring in our lives uh, to the Lord in a fruitful way? Is our life, is our words, are, are our words, are our actions in such a way uh, that others uh, come to know about Jesus, Jesus Christ? Is it possible? And that is the practical thing that we are talking about. And the practice in God's presence is called abiding. Uh, you know, it says, and I'm not going to go read them again, uh, all the verses, but I just want to tell you, abiding means he, he stays with us. He's in us. He's around us. He's with us. It talks about that in John 15, verses 4 to 5. Abiding is practiced when we trust God in all situations. If we believe that God is present, God abides Right, Emmanuel means God with God is with us. If we believe that, then we should trust God in all situations, even in these tough times of coronavirus, even in the tough times of whatever it may be, just health wise, financial, physical, emotional, relational, whatever those things are. Are we trusting God in all those situations? And when we say trusting God, not like, well, yeah, God will do what, and then I'm just okay, what? No, we have to also act accordingly. Uh, knowing that what God wants, knowing God's will, right? Jesus actually came and set an example for us that we have to obey in all cases, be obedient to God the Father. So uh, when we trust God, we will obey him. Even if something sounds difficult, like when God tells us to do something, you're like, oh my God, how can I do that? Remember Abram, how can I be a father? I'm 75, 80, 90 years old. How can I be a father? But, you know, happened, right? Uh, and uh, Many sons, not one son. It says Abraham have, will have sons like the stars in the sky and sands on the seashore, right? So we have to trust God in all situations. That is how God's presence is practical, okay? And John 15, 7 says, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Meaning that if God is in us, lives in us, and his word, meaning the Bible and God's word uh, lives in us, then we will find out, we will know, we will ask God what his will is, what his plans are, and those are the plans that will be fulfilled in our lives. So we are to let God's word abide in us. That's one thing, I, if, I, if I can tell you one thing that you need to carry forward in 2021 is that God's word, uh, give that priority, give that importance 
you know, and don't just read it. I, I don't want people to say, I finished the Bible eight times, three times, five times, 10 times, and there is nothing in your life that shows that you have read the Bible. I would rather have you read 10 verses, but that you leave, live out those 10 verses. And that is the thing that I would suggest to you that when God lives in us, people will know that. You will not have to hang a label, born again. You will not have to put a label, a Christian. Uh, you will not have to do any of those things, but people will see that. And sometimes you can memorize God's word. I tell that to Sunday school children, but even adults can sometimes memorize some key verses and you meditate upon those verses, right? Um, I had a friend, I've told many times about this, uh, that I had a friend who would have just one or two verses per day and he would write those verses down on a flashcard and he would keep that with him and all day keep reading it, reading it, reading it and asking God, God, what is it that you are trying to tell me in these verses? Uh, what am I supposed to do about these verses? Tell me, give me knowledge, give me wisdom. He would keep doing that and he would have those verses memorized. He would keep them on his desk and he would keep looking at them during the work day, right? At, at those verses. And then, uh, and, you know, God talked with him and then he would go out in the evening on his walks and whoever he met, he would talk to them, you know, and just say what God told him about those two verses. Because remember, he had digested those verses. He, he didn't just read it and no, but he digested. He, he, he chewed the, on them and he, he, he in, in, ingested those verses in his, in his body, in his mind, and in his soul. And then what would happen the next day, he would have two or three more verses and he would write those down on a flashcard, do the same thing, go to office and those two flashcards from the previous day, he would pass it on to somebody. And he would encourage them to say, this is what God did for me yesterday. Uh, on based on these verses and pray the same would happen to you. And this is, you know, it's not giving big lectures. It's not hitting somebody on the head like, hey, Sudrija, you know, come on, be, be good. Otherwise, you know, God, no, it's not that, you know, turn them to God's word. And that is how God's word is practical. Uh, one more thing I want to quickly share. I think I have a few minutes. So I want to take time uh, to know actually two more things, but I'll make it quick. And that is that God's Presence is peaceful, right? So you, you saw the, the few things that we said. God's presence is uh, everywhere. God's presence is personal. God's presence is practical. And then God's presence is peaceful. And God's Holy Spirit dwells in our life uh, that, you know, if we are saved and he produces fruit in our lives, right? And part of that fruit, Galatians 5, 22, fruit of the spirit, right? So part of that fruit, is peace. And that's the peace we are talking about, right? God's uh, presence would bring. How many of us are peaceful today? Honestly, I'm going to, I'm going while I turn to Galatians 5.22, I want you, whoever is listening, think about it. Do you really have peace? Or are you worried? Are you anxious? Are you angry? Are you confused? Do you have bitterness? Do you have some kind of fire going on? Are you concerned about what's happening today or tomorrow? Think about it and ask your question. Do you have peace? While I turn to Galatians 5.22. Take this moment to reflect in your own mind. You, I'm not going to ask you to answer it. Yes or no. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to do that. But I just want you to, uh, to answer for yourself. Do you have that peace of God? Galatians 5, 22 is, uh, is what we want to wanna look at here. Okay. I'm going to move this a little bit. I'm having a little tough time here. Okay. So Galatians 5, 22 says, and remember the thing here is it says fruit. It doesn't say fruits. It says fruit. Pavitra atmanu for. Pavitra atmana for. Fruit of the spirit is love, joy, Peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you have received Christ, if God's presence is with you, we're supposed to have this. Now, I'm not saying that there is not a day when you got angry. I'm not talking about an occasional Something made you angry. I'm not talking about some other some day where uh, you you didn't feel loving, right? Something happened and you just didn't feel the love. 
I'm not talking about once in a while, okay, if this wasn't possible and you could not show kindness to, okay, I, I'm, I know. In general, majority of our days, majority of our lives should be trying to show uh, this fruit of spirit in our lives. I'm going to read it one more time because I know some of us are writing here. So I'm going to read it again. The fruit of the spirit, according to Galatians 5.22, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do we have that peace? I, I hope you found that peace when you asked yourself that question. Uh, think of the peace that Jesus Christ has promised, right? It's the, John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives uh, that I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So it's not like the world, the worldly things like, you know, it's not a mantra. It is not somebody sprinkling something on you. It's not somebody saying some words and comforting you. So you have this aura of peace. All of those things are temporary and they are not going to be lasting for long. Okay. So again, God's presence, if God is with you, if God's word abides in you, and if you meditate, if you are constantly like that Psalm chapter one, verse two, if you enjoy reading God's word and enjoy God's presence, then you will find God's peace. And the last thing is that God's presence is powerful. We all need to experience uh, this power of God's presence right now. And I'm going to tell you, my dear friends, that you may experience it, but have somebody else experience that by your presence. When you go visit a family who is hurting, when you talk to a friend who has some difficult times going through right now. Uh, when you have somebody, even across, walking across the road, you just see somebody that may be hurting or hungry or whatever it may be. Take a moment, uh, you know, and use that, the God's power there, pass it on to them and help them to experience God's presence through you. God's presence is powerful. It changes lives. Our lives are changed. I will give you my example and I'll tell you my life. God has changed because God's presence is powerful. And I'm sure all of you have that story. I'm sure all of you have something to share about that, but don't make it temporary. God's power, God's presence has to really change you. You cannot be the same once you come in touch, once you come in contact with God. Uh, you know, um, I always tell people that come as you are, but don't leave as you were. Right? Tame jeva cho eva avo prabuni pase, pan eva neva pacha na jata. Badle ne jao. Change. Get something new in your life. Get something that God gives you before you walk away. You know, there are things that I'll tell you that God gives. I, I have a list one day I prepared about all the things that God uh, gives us. And it is interesting. I'll tell you. You know, here are the things that God, God's presence and God, the, the practical part of it, God's powerful part of it, and the richness. How rich is God? God owns everything. He, you know, forget about this contest of who is the number one richest person. God is the richest. He's the rich. He owns everything on earth. And according to those riches, he strengthens us. He strengthens the inner man in our spirit. But I made a list, and I want to show you this. And I'm going to read uh, that. I'm, because you may see it, I don't know, upside or reversed or what, but... Uh, I think I showed this. You see it properly? I'm going to read them to you. But this is what God's presence, it is so powerful. He is able to give you all these things. Not a single power in the world, not a single person in the world. I don't care how much power they own or they have. They will never be able to give you any of these or never the something that lasts. So here's what God's presence. It says, it says presence of God brings, right? So after that, what does he bring? What does God's presence bring? Eternal life. Mercy. Forgiveness. Salvation. Love. Joy. Peace. Life. Truth. Something I'll talk about second. Power. It gives you power to the weak, hope, happiness, 
encouragement, self-control, victory, gentleness, goodness, patience, kindness, faithfulness, strength, healing, and holiness. Because God is holy, you also be holy, Bible says, right? Uh, because you cannot, there is no way that on our own, you can go bathe in some river somewhere in the world. <laughs> you can take a baptism inside out, upside down, sprinkle. I'm telling you, it's God that is the only person. God is the only one who can make us holy. And that is by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. God's presence is powerful. And as a result, as we are strengthened, God will dwell in our hearts. He will have a home in our hearts and he will rule there. You know, in that powerful God, King of Kings will rule. Uh, you know, and he, where is his kingdom? His kingdom is not outside in the world. His kingdom is not somewhere, you know, his kingdom is in our hearts. We are the kingdoms individually and collectively, the body of Christ. So again, God, God's power, God's presence is powerful, my dear friends. So I just want to uh, tell you again that uh, may this Christmas, may this new year, as you start, change your lives. Things we have learned. There's a couple of things, two things specifically we have learned, right? One is that keep your body healthy. That is a practical thing. I said God's presence is practical. A practical side that we learned from COVID-19 is keep your body healthy. If you do not take care of your bodies, if you do not build up your immune systems, if you do not take proper care, if you're not disciplined, I'll tell you, my friends, when this time, if it, heaven forbid, if it happens again, we will be in trouble. Okay, so keep your bodies healthy. The second one, the practical part of it, um, I, we already talked about enough spiritual things. I'm talking about the practical part of it. Financially, be wise. God gives us all his blessings. God gives us all jobs. God gives us all money and provisions and uh, all of those things that God provides for. It's all from God. It's not from us. You know, if, the, the, if I wake up in the morning and I go to work and I work 8, 10, 12, whatever hours a day for five days, six days a week, whatever it may be in your case, it is all through power of God. So God has given us that, but use it wisely. Learn how to manage your money. One thing we did learn is that the people who did not uh, were in trouble. They ran out. They had to look other places. They had to depend on the government or handouts from others. Okay. Uh, and yes, there are obviously situations like that. We, it's a system, right? It's a system set up in the world. So that's okay. But why not be so sufficient? Why not be so good in the blessings, managing God's blessings, like that person who was given the five talents and who doubled it to become the 10? Why not you be the supplier the next time? Why not you be the provider of some people around you the next time? I, I know people that have done that. I know people who have, even in these times, donated, given charity. People who are uh, servants. A perfect example in India, the servants that cannot come to work, a lot of our Christian families paid them the full salary. And that's the pra pra practical side I'm talking about. But my point is those, those two things, especially when we enter 2021, I hope we have developed that practice. And the most important one, I will leave you with that, is to stay firm in God's word. Find time. You know, even I myself, I'm telling you in the busyness, sometimes we find it hard to spend enough time. Individually, maybe we find time. When everybody's asleep, asleep I can do. But I'm talking about as a family. So those of you who are leaders of the family, and I'm not talking about a man or a woman, I'm talking about those who can lead the rest of the family, lead them in God's word. Have a time where everybody needs to be at a table, around the table, for even for a few minutes. And even them, they should be leading God's uh, other fellow human beings to God. It is your responsibility. Forget about going to the ends of the world to spread the gospel. Spread it in your home. That's the biggest thing that we can learn. And then God will use us, right? So that is my prayer, that God uses you mightily in this next year. Uh, let us turn to God again and... Uh, bow our heads, and I would uh, take all of us 
as an offering to God. Our lives, those of us who are listening, and I'm going to read these things again, that God would give us these things, but I'll read that in, our, in my prayer. Let the, the, the Galatians 5.22, I just want to read that again, that God would grant us some of those things and all gradually, practically, every day as we grow, as we mature, uh, that we would be able to display this fruit, those eight fruits of the Spirit, okay? Or is it nine, eight? Okay. But anyway, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your presence. A presence that is practical, presence that is powerful, presence that is everywhere, presence that is uh, uh, just something that we just cannot avoid, Lord. It is something that we cannot get away from. You are everywhere, Lord. So there is no place we can hide. But Lord, I pray that we would be open enough, uh, no matter how we are. Your word says, come to me. So Lord, we pray that everyone today would be able to come to you in whatever current situation they are in, whether they are in trouble, whether they have done something wrong, whether somebody else has done something wrong, uh, whether they think they're not worthy. Lord, uh, you want everybody because your verse, your, your word, your Bible says, whosoever. It doesn't say those who have, no, it says whosoever uh, believe it. So Lord, I, I pray that everybody would take that word grab that word, make that sentence, make that verse their own, John 3.16, because that's the only way we are going to receive eternal life. That's the only way we're going to find ourselves in your presence in Garden of Eden, in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, in your vineyard, uh, in your presence. That's the only way we will be able to be there if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and received forgiveness for our sins. So Lord, as we enter and as we get close to entering the 2021 year and we put 2020 behind us, help us to uh, attain some, if not all, in our daily lives. And there, that is love. Help us to love everyone. Help us to love you. Joy. Give us that joy that only comes from you and comes in worshiping you, comes in your presence, not in the worldly things, but in you, we find this joy. Peace, again, uh, we talked enough about the peace that surpasses human understanding. Help us to attain that peace that you have, you have given us and you wanna give us, forbearance, so that we can bear things that we go through. Uh, we, we are patient, uh, we are willing to uh, let go, we are willing to allow others to have their way. Uh, if others have opinions that are different than ours, help us to accept those opinions uh, and let us not uh, be boastful and prideful and show power by imposing our own beliefs and our own opinions on others, but that we would be forbearing with others, that we would show kindness, uh, help us to be kind to our fellow human beings, starting with our homes, help us to be kind to our own families, our spouses and our children and our immediate friends and families. Help us to be kind. Goodness, uh, Lord, just as you are good to us, help us to be good to others. And that good could mean many things that we could share our blessings. If you have given us plenty, help us to share that with others. And faithfulness, and faithfulness to you, Lord, that just like God is faithful, God, you are faithful, that we would be faithful to you and we would never turn to anyone else or anything else, but always be uh, keep fo your name in focus and always follow Jesus Christ. Not only that, but Lord, I wanna pray especially that you would help us to be faithful in relationships with each other. When we build relationships, when we have friendships, when we create new relationships, and that takes a long time. Sometimes it takes a long time to build relationships. I pray, Lord, that we would be faithful to our friends. I pray, Lord, that we would not break those relations for petty matters. I pray, Lord, that we would not be angry and break those relationships just because of one mistake that somebody does. Uh, Lord, you have taught us uh, or you have shown us forgiveness. And I pray that we would be able to show that to others. Gentleness. Again, Lord, that's another thing. We get angry. Uh, Lord, but help us to be gentle, help us to be kind, uh, help us to uh, be uh, sober, help us to be, uh, have a tone of voice that others would like to hear. And lastly, self-control, Lord. Um, the biggest problem we have is our own self. My own mind, 
uh, you know, tells me to do something wrong. My own mind uh, leads me to commit sin. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would help us to have self-control. When a wrong choice is given to me, given to us, help us, Lord, that we would not make that choice. Help us, Lord, so that we would be like Joseph, who ran away from Potiphar's wife. And that's what we need to learn, to run away from sin. Help us not to play with sin. Help us not to deal, try to deal with sin because Satan is powerful and he knows our weaknesses. So Lord, help us to have self-control so that we would not fall into temptation and do sinful things against you. So thank Lord, again, we ask all of these things. We ask that you receive our lives as offerings today. We ask also that you will receive the offerings and bless all those who do send donations to their respective churches or for those who are keeping the donations at hand. So until the day church opens, they want to bring those in uh, to the church. All of those things, Lord, you know what is going on. And I pray that you would bless all of those things. Most importantly, bless our lives. And I pray again for the rest of the days of year 2020. And we want to joyfully uh, look um, to the year 2021. Uh, and in those days, Lord, I pray, one thing I pray that two things would happen. One is your love, our love for you and our love for each other would be even more. The times of COVID where we were kept apart from each other, where we could not see each other, where we could not meet each other. Let 2021 bring that time we are looking forward to when we look forward to the, uh, seeing each other in person. So bring that time soon, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I think uh, just one uh, last uh, thing. Let me see if I can, uh, and then we can have the um, final benediction. Uh, let's see if I can have a song or something, just a verse of a song I would like to uh, present. Uh, which we normally use as an offering song, but let's see if I have something that would make sense to us today. I'm trying to find a... Okay. I have one that we haven't sung, which is something um, that is a kawali. I'm going to share that with you on the screen. Uh, unusual, uh, unusual choice of song for this time, uh, but I, I just uh, think that it would be uh, something we haven't sung this time yet, this this year yet. So I'm going to sing the first verse and the, I mean the chorus and the last verse. Okay. Hmm? It's okay. All right, that's fine. All right, let me have it. Let's see. Kanji, I'll do this. Kanji, let's do that. That's okay. Okay, but this sound is horrible. Oh, oh, here. Okay, we're gonna do some real live uh, uh, tunes. So for those of us who don't see this in MGM, uh, for you it might be something interesting. So we're gonna sing the chorus and the last verse here. Okay. Jagat me aya Jagat me aya Oh, 
different end for MGM worship, all in English, but one in Hindi. But uh, yes, this is what we are celebrating, that God uh, has come to our, God has come down, Emmanuel, right? God is with us, God with us. And who is he? Taranhar, you know, as our savior, our redeemer. And he came because he heard our voices. He, he heard our uh, sound. You know, Pukar is like our voices. He heard the sinners were calling upon God, and that's what he listened to. And the rest of the verses, I don't want to translate, but basically it just talks about what condition we were in and why God had to come down to get us out of that condition, right? He had to completely, uh, you know, eradicate that sin, you know, uh, and win a victory over sin, win victory over death, uh, so that we would, uh, it says, Kardia Beda Par, meaning he has got us across this journey of life on this earth and got us to that shore, uh, you know, where one day we'll be all there, uh, right? Uh, in, the, in the heavenly realm, uh, in eternal life, as I said earlier, kingdom of God, uh, the vineyard of God, whatever it is, right? Uh, and the important thing I told people, the Sunday school children, is the presence of God. Remember that where God is present is where I want to be. So that's the idea that we are. We are going to be in God's presence. And I, I don't want to refer to as heaven or hell, which is also true, very well known terms. But what I want to tell people is the ones who know Jesus as their savior will live in the presence of God. And then one who do not uh, accept Jesus as their savior will, are going to live away out of the presence of God. That is the difference that is going to happen. And I don't want to be away from the presence of God. Right. Uh, that's what we learned about today, about the presence of God. So may the Lord bless you. Uh, and let's have this final benediction as well as I say that, um, that may uh, the love of our Heavenly Father and grace and mercy uh, for Heavenly Father, the love of Jesus Christ, uh, constant counseling, guidance of Holy Spirit, as we see, as we pray today, who lives in us, uh, that guidance, that inner voice that uh, one driving us to the real, the right path, may that presence, may the counseling of that Holy Spirit. So the presence of the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit be with us and all God's children everywhere from today till the day Christ returns. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, I see a chat, if I missed, I'm not sure, okay. So that's okay, but I'm going to stop the Facebook, but um, uh, the few of us who are here, Ketanbai is here, Nimisha, we are all...